Hey everybody, welcome back to Visual Novel Book Club. I'm your pal Sloby. With me, of course, my good friend Jim. Hey everybody. My good friend Oren Ronan. Good evening. My good friend Turbo C. Hello. My good friend Devious Vacuum. Welcome back. And uh Pula Hoka, who may or may not be in the bathroom. Who knows? Um <laughs> I love how that's what we decided what it is, too. It's really <laughs> ominous. <laughs> is it? I didn't. <laughs> it would have sounded more ominous if we didn't inject the bathroom part into it. <laughs> All right. Listen, Chapter we got six. some sh- we got some Shibuya scrambling to do, right? Or that we did and that we're going to tell you all about. Um, so we, we took characters again. I, I took Maria, and I guess we should have spoken about this before we start recording, but I feel like I should probably go toward the end, or at least after. Yeah, I think you should go less, or at least after Kano. Yeah, like, Kano and Maria should be together at the end. I don't know which order, though. I, I agree with that, yeah. For, but for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, you may find out soon. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I hope. If you listen to the whole podcast, maybe. It was really weird, though, because, I mean, we can talk about it for a second because maria's basically goes up till like 10 minutes into the hour and then you can't do anything until you complete connor's route basically yeah so you start and end with maria yeah exactly um i mean i could start if you wanted but no it's too no, big we, yeah we should probably do like osawa and minorikawa first yeah all right let's do it let's do it then all right do you want to start off with osawa i got him yeah tear off that band-aid all right <laughs> Sure. So, uh, we start off with the <laughs> This is so bold. Yeah, just lose all the audience right at the beginning. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Make it easy for the rest of everyone else. Okay. So, we start off with Osawa, and he's sort of monologuing to himself. He says, uh, uh, I don't want to know how people feel. All I want to know is what viruses feel. I prefer our viruses. Uh, because they make move to... No move to encroach on me from the other side of my microscope. Which is a weird choice of words. I don't know, dude. That's like their whole thing. Viruses. Right? They're yeah, all like trying it. to encroach on us. That's one thing I've always heard about viruses. They just leave you alone. And <laughs> just standoffish viruses. That's what they do. They just stay back, mind their own business. Don't bother anybody who's not bothering them. I don't even know why I study them. They don't do anything for me. <laughs> but. Um, so yeah, basically he, he goes into this thing about how he understands... Uh, viruses but not people and you know that that sort of standard shtick of social interaction is hard um so anyways uh after that he decides to call up makino um who i'm not sure if we've introduced them before but uh, he talk reference them like we do um and he basically asks to hold an emergency board meeting so that they can try and get the antivirus uh, Makino says that one of the board members is overseas and has been missing for a couple of days, and also that appointing a representative would take it l- probably about a day, uh, which isn't enough time. So Makino is the boss who we met in the car before. Mm-hmm. Is that him? Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't remember his name. He's also Eyes Father. I I didn't remember his name, but I knew it was him. Yeah. Okay, I'm a, I'm not going to claim to know anything about pharmaceutical companies, but this I feel like this does this track. I mean, like you can't we can't avert a crisis and get a security override on this door unless the board convenes. Like, ah. I mean, something about pharmaceutical companies is that and pharma, the pharmaceutical industry in general is that they're extremely risk averse to a point that would seem absurd to a lot of mm. other fields and backgrounds. Mm-hmm. But I mean. I mean, I'm sure like some of this is dramatic effect. Of, you know, I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm just saying. Like, well, these these are the security measures. They do, they just don't have anything for like real emergencies. I guess. I'm sure, like if they ask the anti-terrorist force or whatever who eventually comes onto the scene to knock down the door, they could do it. That's another thing I was thinking too. Like when Osawa's like, "I've got nobody." I'm like, "Can't like Tokyo Police or somebody kind of be like, all right, look, get a battering ram. Like we're doing this, like." to hell with yeah and it seems like the biggest risk of all would be killing off everyone in shibuya that'd be pretty high on the risk scale yeah right like that's that's your problem right there it it makes me think like there's some undercurrent that we just don't know like he's using it as an excuse it would be a really fucking awesome pr move actually if you were just like hey 
let's my company save the day with this virus mm -hmm. that we created. Yeah. <laughs> But we cured you. I mean, come on. It was pretty good. We saved your asses from this virus that we created, but we did save. Yeah. yeah I mean, don't <laughs> don't mention the other part in that PR report, but right. it's like, I did threaten you, but I saved you. But I saved you. You know, like, let's. Yeah. You try pulling off the quiet part and then the loud part, like, uh, so we released the virus and then we saved you from the virus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, pharmaceutical company. All right, guys? Are you all with me? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so anyways, knowing who my, uh, remembering who Makino is, that makes a bit more sense. Because, like, throughout this dialogue, he seems like kind of uh, a dick. Yeah, a dick. And just like, so I was just like, are you are you just outright stating that you're not going to help my daughter? And he's sort of like, well, I'm not stating that, but it is kind of what's happening. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, we get a choice here that says we can take matters in our into our own hands or trust that Makino will do something. I'm not sure it actually matters, but I told said to take Makino on his word. It definitely matters because if you um, try to do things yourself, then uh, he goes out and picks up Minorikawa on the way and they oh, go yeah. to the front right. yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, they go to the yeah, there's a whole plot thread that happens that yeah. I think is kind of awesome but sadly. yeah but it, 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 it results in bad endings for for everyone yeah I, I I completely forgot about that because I did not expect uh Osawa be, to be the type of person to actually interpret take matters into your own hands as actually doing something <laughs> actually taking matters into your own hands <laughs> I, I you thought it would be like Osawa would be like hey Kajiwara can you do this for me like I thought he would just go onto the forums, which is, by the way, what he does in the actual route, yeah. and complain about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, Osawa sits on his computer, opens up Ionet, uh, trying for a distraction, and he opens up a new topic, talking about his Aya Fortune Teller uh, reading, which said he, that basically he was just a bad person, and just told him <laughs> the truth. Um, mm -hmm. That then he actually says that he agrees with the fortune and then just sort of talks about his troubles with his family, wife and daughter. Um, mm -hmm. Says he's sick of being the person that he is, but that it's probably too late to change. Meanwhile, we hear a commotion from the living room and Kajiwara is actually yelling at all the other detectives. Um, <laughs> I love that he yells, you've got to be kidding me, as if in response to the post that Asawa just made. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> By the way, is this the part where we also um, read a response from Pretty Honey? That's Not much later. Uh, later, yeah. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because, because it, I have It's very some... good. I, I kept a lot of notes on that part. I have some comments on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah, I forgot Pretty Honey was somebody was like somebody we met too. I'm like, it's kinda... Shizuo, Rumi's dad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's right. I forgot. That's right. <laughs> and we talked a little bit in the previous episode about uh, whether he knew he was acting like a like a, a, a little girl or if it was yeah. just a, a big misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his, the way he writes is definitely like the, the way like an eighteen year old girl would write with <laughs> oh, the emoji God. and the other language. <laughs> lots of uh, lots of uh, little ASCII emoji cheese. Yes. Yeah. Um, but anyways, Kajiwara is arguing with the other detectives, and the other detectives say um, something along the lines of admitting that he's a talented direct detective, to which Osawa uh, thinks to himself, wait, Kajiwara really is a real detective? <laughs> <laughs> wait, does he say he is a real detective or he's not? Oh, wait, because they're either like he's a bureau or city detective or something or precinct detective he's a precinct guy okay. but like osawa did not th i don't know what osawa thought but i guess he thought that kajira just sort of somehow stepped into the situation gotcha but anyways uh kajira tells us that the police is being recalled uh can no longer help um and in this exchange we uh, Osawa sort of figures out that Maria's going to try and be brought into custody and just sort of kept into quarantine. Um, Osawa gets enraged and once sort of makes pleas to all the detectives to actually try and help her, but they do nothing, just sort of uh, walk away. But Kajiwara, good old detective banana, stays behind. That's yeah, right. He's like, I'm not letting someone die on my watch. Have a banana. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
he, he he calls up actually his HQ and um, argues with them to make let him uh, stay. Basically, um, he says he was he was moved by Osawa's parental display of emotion and made him want to help. Wow, doesn't take much. <laughs> no, I really like. I was like, are they in love? Like, are they gonna fall in love now? <laughs> They are just sort of, like, sitting in chairs completely across the room from each other while having this, like, <laughs> emotional discussion. <laughs> but it's also the first time Osawa has done, like, the bare minimum as a parent, and he's like, oh, wow, I'm so impressed by you doing the bare minimum. <laughs> it was a big step for him, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's why they must be in love. You're not a monster, sir. I respect that. You're, like, 80% monster. <laughs> So now we're presented with a choice, because uh, Kajiwara is like, I don't know if I can do too much. Osawa says there's plenty that Kajiwara can do. For instance, number one, I can have a banana whenever I want. Number two, you can find things that have gone missing. Or number three, that fried egg on rice you made me was delicious. Uh, you better damn well pick number one, because then the two of them ha- share bananas together. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. Uh, Turbo, I am. Yeah, I'm. I'm ready to disappoint you. I did not. Yeah, I did not either. Yeah, I didn't either. Oh I only god. saw it when you posted the picture in the chat. Oh my god, you could have finally gotten a banana from Detective Banana. Do they talk about the same thing every time? Yeah, I think you, you get a chocolate bar if you choose at least what I chose. Okay. Of a banana. Mm-hmm. Does he talk about? Does he talk about his daughter every time? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we share the banana, some soft piano music plays as we're eating uh, bananas in silence when he, next to each other, and Kajirara mentions that he usually eats a banana when he goes to the park with his daughter. Um, he got too into his job, uh, neglected his family, then got divorced two years ago, and doesn't get to see his daughter anymore. So I was like, what an asshole father you are. The oh. establishment that Kajiwara is divorced, I, that also, to me, set it up as like, are they going to fall in love now? Like, they're like <laughs> establishing that he's available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is all secondhand. I mean, I'm, I'm not really familiar with the actual law, but like visitation rights law in, Jap- in Japan are completely different from what they are elsewhere in the world. So most divorced people, whoever doesn't get a child, really doesn't get to see them anymore. At all. Wow. Wow. That's sad. It's basically up to the one who got custody, and in most, in most cases, the mother, in most cases, they don't want the father to see the, to see the child. And <laughs> Yeah, uh, Kajiwara is sort of like, it's, it sounds like the mother has like complete control over this, because Kajiwara mentions yes. that his ex-wife is now getting remarried and doesn't want him to see the daughter at all anymore. Yeah, and, and, and the Holy law is shit. sides with the, the parent with the custody, pretty much uh, every time. So there are a lot of cases where, like, especially fathers who, does, who doesn't get to see their children at all after they get divorced. I have some subreddits for you all to read. <laughs> <laughs> so Osawa, after realizing that uh, Kajiwara is also a man with daughters and wife troubles, um, <laughs> thinks, hey, I, I, can, I can tell this guy some shit. And then uh, suddenly brings up the emails that he got earlier in the day um, and decides to show that to him. And... Back at the computer, there's a response to the forum post by Pretty Honey, and we can get a chance to read it, and why the hell wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> especially knowing that it's Shizuo now. Um, so if you read it, it says, uh, I got the sa- I got that same result. Uh, do you really think it's too late? Don't give up hope. Hang in there. And then a bunch of emoticons. Um one line that was really weird, it was like, every family has its share of problems. Uh, when it comes to family, there's no such thing as game over. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, gamers. But yeah. but there is, just to know. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, don't let it get you down, Julie. I'm not sure who that is. As, as we find out in, in the tenor's route, <laughs> there is a game <laughs> over for families. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Osawa, you know, Osawa's like, look, there's no such thing as game over in family. And Kajiwara's like, I can't see my fucking daughter ever again, okay? <laughs> like, there's there's something pretty close, I gotta tell you. <laughs> God. Um, and then uh, the last line is, uh, besides, I did learn one thing from reading your post. In the end, a father's happiness is his daughter's happiness. Um, Kajiwara, apparently just reading over his shoulder, um, 
mentions that the last line is curious and wonders how a young girl on a forum for 40 year olds would <laughs> uh, know to write something like that. Yeah. When he's just like almost almost got the detective instincts on right on this one. Wow. Okay. <laughs> detective Banana knows what's up. Yeah. He does. Yeah, I think so. I really like to believe Detective Banana is extremely competent. Mm-hmm. I think I think he is, but, uh, yeah, and he- we actually learn that very quickly because uh, we sh- we show him the emails, catch him up on what the viral and the antiviral is, and then uh, Kajirar immediately goes into to internet detective mode. Yeah, now now we get to the part where every visual novel author really likes to show that they know what an IP address is. <laughs> 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 to be fair, that's like every American like TV crime show. Also, you know, like, yep. it felt so much like that. He's like, oh. This email address starts with an A, and it looks like it maybe came from a foreign address, but I think it's probably from actually from within Japan. And then you open a command prompt and you write IP config, and you get the IP address. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yes, Jesus. Well, well, first this he shows him how, how a mind. header works. He's like, oh, here, here's oh, how you yeah. look at the real header, not the fake header that you're looking at. <laughs> yeah, so he pulls out the uh, he pulls out the IP from the email somehow. Um, Finds out that the the, <laughs> the right. source IP, I should say, um, finds yeah. out that the email was sent from Shibuya and from the same internet provider that Osawa has. So oh. Hajirar pulls up IP config, looks at the router, and notices that the IPs are the same. Well, not the same, but same enough same that the email whatever, came from inside the house. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. How? So yeah. Osawa thinks that I sent it, and then uh, Makino calls us and said there's no luck on the uh, emergency board meeting. Why would you think I sent it and not uh, Tanaka? T- Tanaka, yeah. This, yeah. This, I don't it's know. It's so weird. Well, isn't Tanaka on his cell phone? Like, I don't think Tanaka would be on like a fam- like a house computer, right? Unless he's on the Wi-Fi, though. But he's also the assistant, so he cl- clearly has access to a lot of stuff. Mm. Is it because her name starts with A and the emails that are might be signed it. A? <laughs> For Alphard? Oh, IP, as in IP. I didn't look at the email address right now, but it says I Osawa. <laughs> Way to disguise your name by taking off one letter. Yeah, <laughs> great. It's her protocol, I understand now. <laughs> I, mean, oh, I mean, It's probably Tanaka, right? And he, like, he's Alphard and he like faked his death. That'd be cool. He had to have faked his death. Well, we discussed this last time where they d- identify him via belongings, which is always, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great. Um, but yeah, that that's the only the only reason you would want to, you know, play this route other than to continue with the other routes is to get the banana and share it with your new best bud and also bad dad, Kajiwara. Hmm. <laughs> Well, look, I mean, maybe bad husband. Okay, we, we don't know. We don't know. He, he focused too much on his work, which also seems to be a theme in this game. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of dads fair. focus too much on their work, not enough on their wives or families. Policemen and their wives is a theme in this game. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I gotta be a little pro dad here, you know? Like, sometimes you gotta, you know, try to, like, get, you know, get the paycheck and everything so they can go to school and all that. Have food. But that said, Osawa's a complete asshole. I can't protect him. <laughs> ah, so who's next? Norikawa? That would make sense. Yeah. Is that me? I, I could wing it if you... I'll help I don't you. Take notes, but I can... Sure. When you choose Minorikawa, he's like he's like dirty. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's... So he's despondent after the loss of... Uh, so he's just been informed in the last chapter that... Um, uh, uh, Tiyama, yeah, Tiyama died, and so after he, he like is sort of like doesn't know what to do. He has a flashback to when he was a uh, like a novice reporter, mm-hmm. and uh, that he was writing a piece about a middle school girl, mo- yeah, middle school girl, middle school girl, middle school girl, one of those, yeah, one of those who, uh, who <laughs> Tiyama, <laughs> middle school girl, tough Japanese phrase, yeah, yeah <laughs> it's really tough to say words. Uh, who had committed suicide, and the school had attributed it to uh, the pressure for studying for tests uh, for entrance exams, but in mm-hmm. fact he had had an inclination that she had uh, uh, committed suicide because of uh, bullying, or at least that it wasn't um, the way the school had described it. 
And he was one of his editors had sort of like said, we don't have the time for you to investigate a hunch. And it pulled him off the report. And Toyama had confronted him on the roof. And in this flashback, we see a very different Toyama than we've seen previously, where he is really like sort of, you know, a guy really committed to the journalism. And he's and he sort of takes Minoru Kawa to tasks and he punches him. And he's just like after he finds out the explanation and he says, listen, you don't give up. You follow a story to, to its conclusion. You don't just back down like this. And basically, Minoru Kawa in this moment is, remem- is remembering uh, Toyama in the way that like he sort of when he idolized him early in his career. Um and the flashback continues and you just get like this idea of like sort of Toyama's commitment to, to, to real journalism. And, uh, and after that, like flashback stops, we cut to a really despondent Toyama who has to decide what, like what he's going to do next. Um, and he's thinking about like this, this motivation from Toyama. And he says like, you know, I, I forget what the exact choice was, but it was, um, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to, see this through to the end like he's not going to give up but like both options are are pretty much i'm going to keep going and fighting but but one of them's like i'm going to stand up for myself right now and the other one is i gotta find that fire within me yes but i read them i read them as exactly the same even though apparently they are not but yeah and so anyway we have this weird conversation with a street tough who, who kind of sort of comes up to him with just his just trips over himself as he's walking by minorikawa and um and this, the street tough sort of blames Minoru Kara for his own, because he's embarrassed. It's Kiryu from yeah, it's Kiryu. Oh, okay. The one that kills people for real, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I noticed it at the time. For, the rest of them are just kind of teens trying to look cool, but Kiryu's the one that's like actually killed someone before. Wait, so is Kiryu just kill people because like um, he keeps tripping and he's like embarrassed, so that like he has to keep his reputation? But he's also really stupid, as we as we will see. There, yeah, that that seems to be a running theme of the SOS gang is that they are angry and stupid. Yeah, I think that's what is needed. Uh, he will kill Minoru Kawa here if you've given the chance. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, to be fair, Minoru Kawa just went through an explosion, and you know all that. Yeah. But yeah, so basically, if you choose the wrong thing to say in reply, then he kills you, and. Then what do you say if to make it? What is the right answer? So you have to tell him. You have to talk about the weapon he has and yeah. how how inefficient it is. Like, wouldn't you rather a weapon that can kill somebody in one shot? Right, because he's just got a stick with like a nail. Yeah. On it. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally like the Simpsons weapon. <laughs> <laughs> totally, he comes back with a stick with two nails in it. Like you were exactly. right, Mister Minorikawa. I've, I've doubled my efficiency here. <laughs> but anyway, so he, he leaves and is like, you just, you just wait right here. I'm going to come back and kill your ass for, for real. <laughs> There's another choice here that where he just leaves without doing anything. That leads to a bad ending somewhere else, but I forgot where. Yeah, it's with Achi. You have to make sure he's not there to beat up Achi. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, so anyway, after, after if when you don't get the bad ending, when you get the good and you you, uh, you go to like get back on, the, on your path as Minorikawa... Of course, guess who's waiting for you? Um, it's it's the old the old cab driver um, whose name I can't think of right now because I don't like know. Kimi- Kimizuka. Kimizuka. Okay. Kimizuka. Okay. Another another dynamic duo here where I'm like the way that he's like waiting there with his arms open. I'm like, are they gonna <laughs> fall in love? Is this just the chapter where everybody falls in love? <laughs> This this is my official. I'm shipping this one because that's just a, a no, perfect. Ship. It's a perfect combination. Mm. It's a it's been a whirlwind romance. No 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 no. This is gonna be. I forget what if it's Sundara or Yandara, but I feel like it's the thing where Minoru Kawa, <laughs> or maybe it's just the thing. Where, he doesn't have time for that love. Okay, he's gotta he's gotta get that story, and that's gonna be his life filled. And maybe he does love the cab driver whose name I've just forgotten, even though it's like been five seconds. Maybe he does secretly, but he can never let that happen because of work. It's a, it's a slow burn. But yeah, he, he needs a driver to get him to play his fist. And that's Kimizuka. But I'm saying they don't have time for a relationship ever. Maybe a fleeting thing. Maybe in the Minorikawa fan fiction, we can... It's a will they, won't they? It, it's, it's just going to yeah. be teased for the, the rest of the Minorikawa anime. So if I would like to subscribe to your podcast where you try and explain what Sundari is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what the fuck thing is, is I never remembered what it was until Undertale, where there was the Sundara plane, where you can't, like, stay too close to it, and then I'm like, 
Oh, right. Okay. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> you should definitely do that podcast. There's also a bad end. There's also a bad end for, um, from Achi's route in this one, which is if you go the wrong way, then Achi runs out in front of the cab and he gets hit and dies. And that's a bad oh, end. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that that's one. A, that's, a bad, that's a quick... That's, that's, like, that's like a triple bad end. It's one for Achi, one for Minor, Minorikawa, and one for Kano. There are so many bad ends this chapter. There yeah. Really yeah, there are a lot. Uh, so anyway, when you when you don't get the bad end here, when you actually get he, you know, he, of course he takes you right over to the offices and he does it in under ten minutes, and um, uh, like he's just like you know dude, you got to stay strong. You know, work. The, the point about work isn't that it's easy; it's that you know that it's supposed to be hard, but the day will be over soon. And he's just like, thanks for your support. And they take off, and then the the romantic tension dips after that. Um, <laughs> but when when you get back into the office. Um, uh, Kiryu is, 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 has apparently just let everything slip, uh, and has told the, um, the, the thugs outside, the debt collectors, uh, what exactly what's happened, uh, that Toyama is dead, and, and they're, now they're, they're, somebody has to pay for this. So Ooh, they head Chiaki. up into the, uh, yeah, it's Yaki, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and when, um, when the two debt collectors come in, there's like the one rowdy youth, uh, Sagawa, and then there's the, um, uh, the older guy, uh, who's like the real guy who holds the debt, which is Ozu, and um, and basically, what the, when they confront him is is they just say to Minorikawa, like, listen, we're gonna, um, you know, we don't trust that you're just gonna get this out and that you're gonna be able to repay us just by putting out this, um, even though you've got a bunch of articles about to go into publication, you're not gonna be able to solve this debt just by one, the next issue. So this isn't gonna be solved now, and imply that they're gonna go after Hana. Actually, they were just saying that they're going to, they just want to know where she is because uh, they've got an idea. Um, and so they have to sort of, they argue back and forth about, um, you know, about what's going to come up next. And, uh, and, uh, Minurika was trying to stop them from, from going after her. Um, and you get a bunch of these, such, these bunch of these choices where, um, you can either say like, uh, how about we just call it even or, you know, or I'll take on the debt or, uh, or, or, you know, something like that. And, um, I, I, what eventually I'm trying to figure out how this all, like how many endings there were here, but there was definitely, you actually get it resolved by saying, if I keep saying what we call it even, and then getting head butted in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. And knocked out. There's a bad ending where Hana, like in, in Kano's route, you can deliver Hana there and then that's a bad ending. And then you can say no, and that's a bad ending. And mm. Yeah. And there's one, there's a great bad ending, though, where he's like, I'm going to repay that debt. Oh, yeah, that's, that's goes, the, the one actually yeah. the good bad ending in this chapter. Yeah, where he goes to decide to, like, to p- repay the debt by finding the rare bluefin tuna. And there's, like, a picture of him in front of, like, a video of a flag, but he's dressed kind of like a Japanese sailor, I guess. Yeah. With, like, that thing on his head, and it's like, go, Minorikawa, find the <laughs> rare sapphires of the sea, the bluefin tuna. Wow. <laughs> great it was it was beautiful so they're working so they but they're like working on the on the paper still chiaki and minorikawa yeah because yeah yeah after minorikawa comes to they're still back and and working and and uh chiaki's trying to write her article and she hands him the copy and he's just like no this isn't good enough go fix it and uh and he's trying to like sort of you know do all this stuff to to create this uh, he's trying to be the toyama He's trying to be the Toyama, and then we get another. Do we get another flashback right here? I think, mm-hmm. which is, which is, it goes back to the, the how this all started. Which is that after like, they, with the two of them working together, and in in that that previous uh, publication that didn't work out, um, Toyama gets, I guess, laid off or quits. It, he's gets severed, he's, so it sounds like quit, he gets laid yeah. off. Yeah, um, but. Because obviously that paper wasn't wasn't doing it, and he has these grand ideals. And so what happens is that uh, Minoru Kawa goes to Toyama's place, which is just an absolute like bachelor shithole, just full of like <laughs> books and papers. And uh, you know he's apparently like his wife has left him after he left his job because he's got this grand plan to start a uh, publishing company, which is uh, Heaven Publishing. And Minoru Kawa is like, that, that's, uh, that doesn't sound great. Like, it sounds really like, you know, foreboding. And he's like, no, it's <laughs> like, you'll be in paradise when you work for me. 
And the thing that he that the Minorikawa notices in all this is that you know you don't normally just start a publishing company. He points this out like that's not something easily done in Japan. And I uh, maybe or you would know better, but it seems like like being able to do that and work with all like have all these associations to like you know to, to sort of you know get the book printed and out there, books printed and out there would wouldn't be easy for someone to start off. So what happens is that he had bought a bankrupt or uh company's uh deals and like their whole their you know whatever their position license. was distribution yeah. yeah and uh and so that would normally cost millions but he somehow found the money and it, his severance could never cover that obviously he's taken a loan from somewhere that was not so reputable uh which is probably which is obviously what's, what began this whole situation and uh but he he just believes that this is going to this is going to change things like he's going to be able to have a really good uh publishing company he's going to be able to sort of do all these things that he wanted to to do and you know have these grand ideals um and, and the issue turns out to be of course that it doesn't work out that way that that uh you flash forward so like he sort of congratulates him when he starts when he starts off this thing and then it flashes forward to him sitting in this office being like all these nonfiction books don't sell and all these books that, that, you know, I had grand ideas for like, they don't, they don't sell anything. The only selling is this gossip rag. And he's apparently even in the divorce, somehow in the divorce, he's gotten custody of Hana and she's there and she still idolizes him at this point. She's like six years old. Yeah. I think it's that like her, her mother didn't want her anymore. So she sent her, she sent her off to him. Or her yeah, mother was so in, in this some case, kind of trouble. Yikes. Yeah. Like the mother got custody and then gave yeah. Hana back, <laughs> and so like, <laughs> I just wanted to prove to you that I could do it, but yeah. you take her. <laughs> There's just bad parents all around in this thing. Yeah. <laughs> in English, all it says is due to circumstances, she is living with me again. That's all yeah. that it says. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, and so we come back to the present again after flashback, and because uh, it was a very sweet flashback where they kind of still believed in him. And in that in this case, uh, Chiaki is is handling back an article, and she's like, "Could you just tell me what to do?" And Minoru Kao's like, "No, you don't. You don't learn that way. You learn by trying something and, and making yourself a better writer." And then he's kind of scratch again. Yeah, start just start from scratch. Try again until you get it right. And uh, then he softens his thing, and he's like, "You know what? This is what Toyama taught me. This is how I became a better writer. You don't, you know." Somebody doesn't walk you through it. You have to learn it and you have to do it the hard way. So it's a very sort of sweet moment that happens there. Um, and the the bad guys are having none of it. The two, the two thugs, the lone sharks are like, now listen, it's a nice sweet moment. We don't give a crap. They're like, just just take take the debt or we're going to do something to Hana. And uh, Minoru Kao with no options is like, fine, I'll I'm here. Give me the paperwork. And he, he actually signs the paperwork to take on the debt. And Chiaki steps up and is like, hell no. And she eats the paperwork. <laughs> that was so great. Straight up. <laughs> and they're like, we're going to have to go print another one from the office. And she's like, keep <laughs> printing them. I'll just keep eating them. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> A lot of things solved by eating in this game, too. But <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And so as like they're trying to struggle to get the stuff out of her mouth, uh, she just turns the volume up really high on the TV where they announced it. Uh, oh, no, the person who died in the blast was not Toyama. It was Tanaka. And everybody in the office is just like, what? At the same time. And yep. he's shocked that that everything they've been believing right now uh, is not true. And they're like, who's Tanaka? And then we get her to be continued. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's another there's another bad ending here. When if the TV doesn't say it was Tanaka, which can happen, mm-hmm. that tripped me up. I got all the good ending or the to be continued except for Minoru Kawa's because I didn't realize there's. We'll find out in a different round, I guess. Or I guess I can just say Kano, Kano has to recommend whether or not to release that information. Yeah, right. Which I totally forgot about that, so I, I ended up looking it up. Yes, and I was like, "Oh yeah, that part." Well, and if you've done, if you did Kano's first, it like, it's really early in the chapter compared to how late this is. So, mm-hmm. makes even. <sighs> okay, let's go to Achi. Just as we're descending toward the more important plot elements here, um, so when we last left Achi and Hitomi, Achi was dramatically carrying Hitomi away from the blast, and this chapter even starts with a nice little animated gif of some smoke in the background. Uh, 
And Achi and Hitomi are sitting on a bench. He's like, are you sure you're, o- you're okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm okay. And, uh, and Achi's thinking like, uh, Maria got exploded in the van, but she, but, uh, Hitomi's like, no, there was a man in the car, but, but there was no, Maria was not in there. And, um, Achi, br- known brain genius, uh, again is like, oh, we should go look at the cameras again, uh, but this, it's closer if we just go to, go to my house where my dad is, and my dad has access to all the cameras, uh, just like the place where we just were that all the community leaders go to, and my dad checks them all the time, um, and so they decide to do that, and, uh, but suddenly... Achi gets a call from his sister's doctor instructing him to come to the hospital because, uh, or he, or he checks his voicemail and he has a voicemail from his sister's doctor. Um, and he, it's the, and she, he's like, she had a seizure at 10 a.m. this morning and he's like, that's so, such a long time ago. Like, why, you know, he's like, why isn't my dad, uh, why is my like? Where's my dad? <laughs> um, oh wait, that's that's a little bit later. Um, right now, he just knows that he, he needs to go to the hospital, and Hitomi's like, "You gotta go to the hospital," and he's like, "No, we have to focus on saving your sister." And Hitomi's like, "What? <laughs> what?" And uh, but before they have time to argue too much, they're interrupted by some SOS gang members. And if you have the bad uh, the bad choice from another route, then Kiryu is there. Otherwise, it's Susumu. Um, and Susumu, uh, seems sad. <laughs> he, uh, he, he tells Achi that he can't keep control of the gang on his own. And, uh, and they have like a moment where they're like standing back to back talking to each other in a dramatic way. And, um, there's just like some inherent humor to it, I guess, cause it's like teenage angst. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, and again, all Achi needed to do was tell his former best friend that his sister didn't want him to be part of the gang anymore. But he doesn't. He can't do it. Um, I wonder if Hitomi was, like, sitting there, like, bursting at the seams to just tell Susumu the truth. Um, probably. Uh, but they have a <laughs> moment and then they they all run away. The, the other gang members and stuff run away. They were going to beat up uh, a new member and try to get quote unquote dues from him. Uh, so they were like scamming him. And Achi was like, that's not, that's not what SOS is all about. Huh. That's not the gang way. <laughs> You're going to give gangs a bad name. Yeah, that's not <laughs> the way. Um, so anyway, they all run away, useless as always. And uh, Hitomi is back and she's like, go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> go see your sister at the hospital and and he's like what about your sister and uh and she's like go like i don't even remember what her argument is because it's so obvious it's like go to the fucking hospital achi yeah she's like I, you, you you help people in trouble and you know what i'm in trouble and he's like yeah i know that's why i'm trying to help you and she's like no i'm in trouble because you won't go help your sister and that's making me be in trouble <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so there's, there's another choice. Just, uh, just pick to go to the hospital. Just go to the hospital. Uh, yeah. there's like uh, some, there's a bad ending here also where he runs and gets hit by a car somewhere in there. Um, no, but the, anyway, the, other, isn't it? the other, op- the other option is here also brings him to the hospital eventually, but it, um, makes a bad ending for Kano. Hmm. So. That's right. Yeah. Go to the hospital, uh, and, uh. Then, the, uh, then he talks to the doctor, and the doctor's like, your sister had a seizure this morning, and she's still unconscious, so you can't go in to see her, because uh, I guess this is this is the ER, or ICU. So here's a nice bit of trivia, by the way. Uh, the actor who plays the doctor here mm-hmm. is uh, the Japanese voice of um, Solid Snake, among <laughs> many other things. <laughs> wow. Among a lot of other voice roles. <laughs> wow. But that's the one that's important for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Another face, fake. Uh, excuse me, uh, famous actor in this uh, in this thing. It's it's the guy from from the uh, from the Shenmue, Dungan and Rampa. it's this guy. Wow. Yeah. I think, that, yeah. Hopefully, he'll connect a lot of podcasts that we do. Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, the doctor's like your your father. Like, I called him and and told him, and but he hasn't been here. And and Achi's like that. That now that you now that I think about it, I haven't heard from him all day. Uh, so his fa- Achi's father seems to be missing, and um, 
So he says, he's like, okay, thanks. And he's on his way back to the uh, waiting room where Hitomi is waiting for him. And on the way out, he hears footsteps and he, he peeks around the corner and sees Kanan threatening Stanley with a knife to his throat. Dun dun. Because uh, we remember from last chapter, Stanley said he was going to take her to the hospital to interrogate and, and also interrogate her as it was implied. Um, so that, this is what happened with that. And she, she was badly hurt then. She, she got up really fast. Yeah. I, mm, she's a mutant. She's a superhero, I guess. Um, so uh, there was also um, a really good bit where if you click on the little tooltip for the CIA, uh, it has some real interesting nicknames for the CIA in that little tool text oh, there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who maker <laughs> yeah, or something? Yeah, the coup makers, uh, which is great. I never heard of in my life. I mean, it may, or at least not in America. I don't know. That's not in uh, Japanese. In, J- in Japanese, they, j- they just say Langley. And it's a little, the regular a little stuff. knife twist in there, I think. That was a little spicy, spicy tooltip there. Uh, <laughs> hot takes about the CIA enabling coups. <laughs> uh, interesting with what's going on in Bolivia right now. Anyway, um, so she's uh, K- Kanan or Kanan is trying to figure out more information about Alfard and. Uh, they, she has a nice tooth throat, and then there's like a struggle where he tries to get out, and then she gets him, but then she, he's got his gun, so he's got his gun pointed at her, and she's got her knife at his throat, and uh, and he's like, but wait, it seems like we're both working together for a common goal to, to catch Alfard, and she's like, fine, and it's like, ah, oh, enemies working together, and then they're gone. Yeah, that was anime as fuck. <laughs> What did they do if what did they do if anything about the fact that they're talking in, in, in English and actually can't understand them? Oh, it just writes it in English. So it's in English in Japanese too. It's completely in English. It's a oh. conversation. Wow. And I'm kind of wondering if so it's not really good. I mean it's fine. It's better than most English and Japanese games, but it's still not like completely like sounds good, so I'm wondering if they like changed it for English. Probably. There was nothing weird about it. Wait, do you mean that their conversation is completely in English in the Japanese version? Yes, like written in English completely. Wow. Mm. And it's like, it's okay grammar, but it's just not natural. So I'm pretty sure they probably like rewrote at least parts of it for the translation. Yeah. I think they just put it in italics in the in the English version. They just It's just italicized, but it sounds completely natural. So they, they probably adapted it. I actually have screenshots mm. of this. So I'm going to put it there in, in, in a chat and you can tell me. Okay. And so then Achi's like, yeah, he's like, oh, if only I knew English. He so. prob- it would probably go over his head if it was in Japanese, too. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, he's like, if only I'd studied harder. And you're like, yeah, on a lot of things, Achi. Yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, t- 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 take a look at the, the screenshot I just put in the chat. Mm, I guess, yeah, it's a little, like, it's a little childish, I guess. Is that... Wait, I'm sorry. Is that the English? And then is that like the Japanese under it saying what the English says? No, like, no, it's or, it's it's the narration. No, it is, you're right. Yeah, actually, it's not. Yeah, kind of quiet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they don't have that at all. So if if a Japanese person plays that and he doesn't understand English, then you have no Tough idea what, okay. what they're talking about. Wow. All right. <laughs> So then, when Achi gets back to the waiting room, uh, he's talking to Hitomi, and uh, and Stanley comes up to them, and uh, and of course, Achi, having just seen this, doesn't trust him at all, and is like, "Oh, Hitomi, this guy is dangerous," and he's like, "What? What? Why? I'm I'm from, <laughs> you know, what? What?" He's like, "No, I'm I'm here to help you. I'm like with the police, and uh, you can give." Two different answers, one where you say Kanan's name and one where you don't. I don't remember what happens because I didn't write that down, but it's you, I, you want to not say her name to him, I think. Um, and I don't, uh, I don't think it matters here. Does it not matter if you say her name I or not? I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I did. But yeah, it seems like it, it, it seems more prudent to not use Kanan's name out loud when talking to Stanley. But uh, so he identifies himself as from the U.S. Embassy and he's here to take Hitomi in, into protective custody. And uh, Achi's like, I don't trust this guy. Uh, we're not going to go with you. 
And uh, he told, and so then Stanley's like, "Well, if you, if you won't come with me, then can I just follow you around? Because then you're still in custody if I'm following you around, I guess." And um, and they're like, "Okay, you can come with us." In like a very childish sort of answer of like, "Whatever, we're still going to do whatever we want." And uh, but <laughs> Hitomi explains the the whole situation so far to Stanley everything that uh, with the blue van and being instructed not to go to the police, and so he understands more about the situation. And uh, then Stanley asks them if they know Teteno, and they say no um, because they don't know the name of the man with the cane. And that also shows that Teteno never identified himself to Hitomi at all, um, obviously. And uh, so they're talking about that, and then suddenly the doctor reappears, and he says, Achi, I forgot to tell you, yesterday your dad called me and said that there would be a brain-dead woman with Bombay blood arriving today around 9 (laughs) p.m. And he's like, that that was really, like, very strange. I feel like your father's maybe having a mental breakdown. Yeah, Shockingly, even Achi can figure this one out. Yeah, yeah, Achi, God bless him. The pieces all fit together, and Achi has like a whole moment, and he, uh, and he's like, "Wait a minute! Like, why would he do that? Why would he know that?" Um, and and then he was like, "He, what, my dad's been missing, and he has access to the cameras." And he's like, "Oh, but anybody could have had access to those cameras." And then he flashes back to the security guard who likes to fall asleep, and he's like, "No one else has been here all day." He's like, "No, so they had to have accessed it from my dad's, uh, from from our house." And he's like, "No," and he's like trying to like convince himself, "No, it can't be, it can't be." But then there's no other option, and, and he asks, "But there is. There is a totally another option. Is you see the security guard sleeping, and it's very easy to sneak by him." Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Achi. Good thing Achi is kind of like you know thick. But uh, but Achi, uh, then he's like, "There's only one way to know for sure," and he says, "Hitomi." What's your blood type? And she says Bombay. And I guess the last time she explained that it was in a bad ending. Oh yeah, you're right. She, she never she never explained it. I don't think we ever actually. It's it never actually stated. It just implied in some tall tips. I think we theorized that that was the case because it was. Did we just yeah. did we just fucking call that like way ahead of time? No, it 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 it's implied very very heavily in some tall tips. Yeah, but it's never. No, actually she said. says a. Th- she says a thing like, because he explains that Suzune has Bombay blood. She said, she says like this weird thing like, "Would you do anything for your sister?" Yes, Remember that's that? It. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was like she doesn't tell him, but it's like this right. whole like, if he had like one more IQ point, he'd be like, "What do you?" Oh, you know. But no, but that's not true either because he never says that Suzune has Bombay blood to her. Oh, it's just in the flashback text. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so anyway. Hitomi says, it's like, he doesn't say it out loud, it's just in the story, when we hear the story, that she has Bombay blood. Hmm. But it's, I thought it was clear that she was thinking that she had, that his sister had Bombay blood. That maybe. Yeah, because she says a thing, totally, that's like that. I remember that clearly. No, like, but, but I, I, I like reread it, that part, so it, it's not, it's, okay. they, they, they never said it. But but there are two tips about saying like specifically how she and her sister are different blood, blood types. So it's very obvious that one of them has the, the blood type. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. yeah. So Hitomi says she has Bombay blood and Achi freaks out and realizes that his dad has been working with Sateno um, and uh, that they're both and trying to kill Hitomi. possibly with the terrorists. And, because, yeah, and possibly with the terrorists. Beca- uh, how, how would he know? Yeah. Like the and night before. The, yeah. And that they're going to kill uh, they, 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 the man that's been trying... Well, at least some of the people that have been trying to kill Hitomi this whole time, his dad's working with them uh, with the, the bargain that like Hitomi would then be brain dead after being shot and uh, and they'd be able to do the blood... the, the organ transfer. So yeah, so that's, that's Achi's big reveal to be continued. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And also... We're going to get into this later, but I'm pretty sure that we, we get a Maria flashback later on. And I'm pretty, pretty sure that the um, storage place he was held in is like, is the shop. Oh, hmm. that's oh. where they, they threw her or something? Yeah, that's where they yeah. brought her. Because she says she wakes up like in a place where with like all sorts of electri- electrical gadgets around. 
and the door was open. And if you remember last chapter, we had a conversation with some, some SOS people about how they're um, breaking into uh, the storage place in, in, the, in, in Archie's shop. So I think that's all ties together. Mm. Mm. That's why the door was right. open and she could escape. Gotcha, I missed that. Interesting. Yeah, me too, actually. All right, Kano. <laughs> Kano, that's me. <laughs> okay, so um, we start uh, with Kano uh, walking into the police station. Um, and he goes uh, straight into the interrogation room because he has to um, question, um, what's his name, Tariq. Uh, yeah, Tariq al Karwan. Yeah, it, it only says Tariq in Japanese all the time. I guess they, they probably says al Kawan once, and then yeah. we just left Tariq every time. Huh, it's the opposite in English. It's weird to refer to him, yeah, it's weird to refer to him by his first name. <laughs> like, ah, oh, the terrorist Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Tariq because that's what I have in my notes. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, uh, he needs to know um, about Sateno letting Tariq go, because he can't, be- can't believe that happened. So uh, he gets mad, he grabs him, uh, Tariq insists that um, they were only after the money and he knows nothing. And he also says that, that yeah, that Tateno let him go, or more specifically, he took out, he took off his handcuffs and then he pointed a gun at him, uh, but didn't shoot. Mm-hmm. So he had a chance to escape. And he thinks that's because um, he was a witness to Tateno trying to kill Hitomi earlier. So Tatiana wanted to kill him, but he couldn't do it and let him escape instead. And Kano gets really mad and pushes Tariq uh, to the ground and the other officers in the room try to calm him down and um, take him out of, uh, out of the room. And then we skip to some time later and Kano is just sitting there in the hallway uh, staring at the presents that Sayama gave him to, to his wife, to Michan. And Kuze, his boss, um, comes along he tells him that uh, Sasayama is in critical condition, but it's still uncertain what's going to happen. He better pull through. All right. All right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What is Kano more upset by? Sasayama like almost dying or that Tateno is not like maybe a perfect cop? <laughs> it's 100% <laughs> Tateno. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe the terrorists said my hero sucks. Also my partner. Though. But not my dick diary guy. It can't be the dick diary guy. <laughs> No, my hero. Did these dick victims mean nothing? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, so there's a potential bad ending here. If um, uh, Achi and Minorikawa was, had a death accident, that car accident, then uh, Kuze puts uh, Kano in charge of, of uh, investigating that accident, and you get a bad ending. And if that didn't happen, then um, Kano apologizes about... Um, disregarding his orders and uh, he thinks he's going to get punished but um, Kuze doesn't do that he just uh, tries to console him and tells him that uh, it's not his fault that Sasayama got uh, stabbed and then and then yeah, he, he asked um, Kano about whether they should tell the media um, that the victim in the explosion was Tanaka or not uh, so if you don't do that then you don't you get a bad ending for Minorikawa and because the TV doesn't mm-hmm. say that Tanaka is the victim yeah uh, then Kuza leaves and we see a little press conference on TV uh, where they talk about Shibuya being um, shut down. Except not completely, apparently. You can still walk out if you want to. Which is so weird. That's like the justification. Like, it's not martial law. You can all walk where you want. Just don't take any public transportation or infrastructure whatsoever. Yeah, th- there's like a technicality here because like Owa isn't officially a virus, so they can't declare martial law. Oh, well, in one of the notes in the like says like that in Japan they're not allowed to like declare martial law like legally like there's just no I mean they, method of doing they it. They can, but you have to have very specific conditions, and because Uwa isn't publicly oh, right. known to the public, then they can't yeah, okay. declare it like a deadly virus, and they can do that. This is contradicted every anime I've ever watched. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. They declare martial law all the time. So they stop the trains and you, know, they, you can't get into Shibuya with a car, but you can still you can just walk out if you want to. Uh, which is going to be bad, bad if, the, if the virus gets out, you think. Yeah. We've confined these people in a small neighborhood. Let's see what happens when we release the virus. 
Uh, so you get uh, an option uh, about either you can call Rumi um, or you can call uh, Michan, Sasayama's wife, or you can just um, uh, go to the hospital to visit uh, Sasayama. And the only correct option is to call Rumi, because if you do the other things, then you go out and you meet Hannah and you send her to Heaven's publishing office and you get to bed in for You send her to Heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the wrong part there. <laughs> No, no, but it's paradise. You don't understand. Oh. At first, I'm like, did I miss a bad ending? That would have been horrible. <laughs> Tateno, just so upset about Tateno, just pulls out his gun and. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said Tateno. Like, that's what killing Hana would be. Like, yeah, you got totally Tateno. <laughs> uh, but if you do call Sasayama's wife, then there's a little conversation there that's like uh, another time where that, like, wife of a police officer comes up because she tells him that like she was always prepared for something like that to happen because she she knew he was a police officer and she knew who she married um but you can't do that you have to try to call Rumi uh, but you can't get her uh, she doesn't doesn't answer the phone uh, and then you get uh, a call from Tateno and he tells um Kano that uh, he has Maria uh, and he wants uh, Kano to bring his tummy over uh, or he will kill her. And uh, Kano is very confused by that. Uh, That's not in my dick dictum anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you still can't figure out that, like, Tateno is a bad guy. <laughs> Poor guy. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so um, he decides to uh, go over to the roof that Tateno told him he will be waiting at. Uh, without he tell me, just because he needs to like hear the entire story first. Yeah, it doesn't even occur to him. Like he just doesn't even. He just bounces right off of him to even listen to what Tateno said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So you can get another bending, bending in here if you. I don't remember exactly what, but some thugs from SOS can can assault you and kill you basically on the way to the roof. Um. But if you do get to the roof, uh, you find the Tenno there. Uh, this is the first time that, like, this is the big reveal. Yeah. So, like, yeah. The, 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 the picture, like, pulls up. You, you see, like, the Tenno's lower body and then pulls up to his face. And if you didn't figure it out by now, then this is where you found out that the Tenno is the man with the cane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think anyone playing this game didn't figure it out, figure it out, out by now. Because yeah. it's very obvious. <laughs> I, th- I think we, we said that in, like, chapter one. And we've seen yes. this guy a bunch of times, so, you know, it's just it's just Kano who, who who's having a bad time right now. Yeah. So, um, Tateno has uh, Maria there. She's blindfolded, bli- blindfolded, and he has a gun to her head. Yeah, I, j- I, I just say here, though, because I tried to do Maria first this chapter, and it yeah, obviously same. blocked me until you... You got to this point. And so all this time I'm wondering, you know, what the hell's going on in Maria's chapter. And then you just come to this where she's blindfolded and held at gunpoint. And I just like it's like the record scratch. Yep, that's me. <laughs> I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. The, um yeah. Yeah. It's um it's funny too, because like basically Maria has a really early keep out. But then after this reveal, usually the keep outs at the same time, how you clear them. But this one's like mm-hmm. a, a 40 minute differential where you have to go back in time yeah. to learn Maria's story. So uh, Kano still t- can't figure out that it is really Maria with the blindfold with the blindfold on. So he you can't fool me. That's a dummy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Tano takes her blindfold off and there's another bad en- ending here. And for Minorikawa. So we didn't get, uh, we, we, we didn't talk about this in Monokawa, but very early on, oh, yeah. you, you have, you have an, yeah. an option where you yeah. can just basically be depressed on the roof. And smoke for, for, on the roof, yeah. For yeah. an entire yeah. hour. Yep. So uh, if you did that with Monokawa, then, he ta- then Maria, um, it, when the, 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 the blindfold is taken, is taken off, she, she spots Monokawa on the roof opposite the place. And it looks like he's going mm-hmm. to kill himself. Um, so Kano rushes over to Minorikawa and tries to talk <laughs> he's him like, out. Hold of- on one second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
tries to talk <laughs> him out of killing himself, though he didn't. Tre- he, he actually gives him the idea about the idea about killing himself, yeah. which you yes. found out in the cow's right view of this. Don't jump! Oh, jump! That sounds great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was just brooding. Yeah. So, but he doesn't have time, so he just handcuffs him to the rails and, and goes back <laughs> to the roof. <laughs> uh, right. But um, Tateno and Maria aren't there anymore, and you get a bad ending. And in Minorikawa's uh, route, you find out that he, he kind of just completely forgets about him. And just, uh, oh, my God. He leaves him there, like, tied to, to the railing for... Basically, I guess Minorikawa dies of anger or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming someone uh, must find him at some point, right? Like, I mean, wow. sound travels off of rooftops. It's it's a big city. Yeah, he's carrying a phone. That's funny. He, he can't Chiaki, he can't give the directions to Chiaki. Doesn't matter. It's funnier. Yeah, it's funnier that way. Maybe he just gave up. He's just like, ah, fuck it. I'll just sit here until I die. Yeah. <laughs> He's about to die, but then Maria plays rock, paper, scissors with him one last time, and then... <gasps> so if Minorikawa isn't there, um, Tateno is still very confused and says, like, this isn't um, the Tateno I know. And Tateno says that Kano doesn't know him at all. And yeah. that time where he poured gasoline all over it was basically because he had a death wish and, and not because he was trying to save anyone. He was trying to kill himself. It's literally the beginning of Lethal Weapon. <laughs> I'm just crazy. I just have a death wish because I don't care anymore. I'm not actually a good cop. I'm just too crazy. <laughs> yeah. So Kano just wants Tateno to tell, to tell, to tell him um, why he's like that. And he points a gun at him. <laughs> and Tateno doesn't think that Kano had it, has it in him to, to actually shoot. Uh, but Kano tells him that, that he, he will shoot. And that pleases Tateno. Uh, and he tells his story, his, his little sub story. Um, and it all happened uh, 17 years ago uh, when Tateno was a young detec- detective and he was following up on an, some kind of an assault incident in Shibuya where like a drug addict um, attacked someone and ran away and he walks by the Endo electricity store and um, meets uh, Endo's wife uh, Koteno, Kot- Kotone uh, with a uh, baby daughter, um, Suzune. Um, and they know each other. They haven't seen each other for a while. Um, turns out they were all like were really good friends in high school, uh, the three of them. Mm-hmm. And he basically tells her to stay indoors because there's like a dangerous man on the loose. And at this point, I immediately knew what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was extremely obvious what was going to happen. Uh-huh. And I also like he's like no I have to go make this deposit my old good friend who's a cop and he's like why don't you just stay inside she's like no I have to do this and he's like okay I'll walk with you which is like why wouldn't you just be like I'm a cop give me the money I'll go make the deposit I'll come back with the receipt don't worry about it you stay inside and stay away from the drug addict who's killing people out here yeah but right. no, he's like, no let's, let's walk reminisce where you can't make the deposit now because I'm a cop and I'm telling you that <laughs> you know I don't know so he takes her to the bank and she gives him the baby for, for a while while she makes the deposit and he doesn't like babies but he has some warm feelings holding her. Yeah, yeah. he forms this very plot relevant emotional connection with the baby immediately. <laughs> God. Uh, and on the way back, back they um, go to a park and sit down for a while and talk and Kotone asks him about, about why he isn't married yet. And he says he's very busy, but she doesn't buy that. He says that like if, if he found the right partner, then being busy wouldn't matter. It's because he loves her. You, you can tell from the direction that he's been in love with her this whole time. We've got ourselves a real Severus Snape situation. Exactly, and 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 I thought and I thought that like it wasn't subtle, but at least it, they, they just didn't like say it out loud, and they just let you figure it out yourself. But then, of course, later in in Maria's chapter, they just really say out loud that he's in love with her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> how could Dima of them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously in love with her, and then um, um, her husband Daisuke, um arrives, and he was actually going to the bank himself, but um, Kotane wanted to do it herself because she she thought he would forget, and takes the baby. He's very proud of of his daughter, um, and then suddenly. Uh, the drug addict appeared before her and put a no, knife to her why? throat. 
What? Oh no. What's gonna happen? Plot relevant meth addict. Yeah. And they do this like um weird thing with the font when when he's talking. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh god, yeah. It's annoying yeah. and funny sounding, I guess, just to show that he's like talking in a voice like this. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. I'm a wacky drug addict. <laughs> Whoa, he's so high, I can't even tell the volume of his voice. What the? <laughs> it's like it's like uh, if Jared Leto as a Joker was a font. <laughs> 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 uh, so it's a 10 points he got at him, and um, Daisuke um, tells him not to shoot because he's going to hit his wife. Um... But Athena knows that, like, there's no talking this guy down because he's on drugs and um, he trusts that he can shoot well <laughs> enough. So he does shoot and we get a little video um, in slow motion where he actually does manage to shoot the guy and, and not hit Kotone. Um, but as Kotone gets up, um, the guy comes behind her and shoves the knife into her back. I thought you see the knife go flying, you but do. You, I guess so. Yeah. I guess it's implied that so he aims for the guy's shoulder, holding the knife, shoots uh-huh. the guy. It flips up in the air, and she sl- like walks away like everything's done. The guy apparently catches it in his other hand and stabs her in the back. Yeah, yeah, it's not completely clear, but I guess something like that happened. Is it possible that there was just a second knife? Yeah, I was thinking that too because yeah. I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's like what the hell like what he shot the knife I saw it go flying I yeah. swear I swear I did no you definitely did that's what they're that's what they're saying happened and then still the guy got the knife and sat there uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you sound so exasperated tonight I gotta tell you there's so many like uh, I don't know <laughs> anyway Shibuya scramble yeah so Katana dies, and there's a little, a little uh, thing that says that, that Ateno's heart died with her that day. Oh my god. It's like a reverse <laughs> Grinch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost as bad as a sour. It's, it, that's, it is. It's a bad story right here. <laughs> it's, I mean, this chapter is a lot of just sad man, dead woman trope going yeah. around. Yeah. 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 They could have had like eight fridges. It really yeah, it's the whole refrigerator section in this game. All of a sudden, chapter six. Yeah. Uh, so he keeps being a policeman because he's very depressed and he thinks maybe that way he can be like get shot one day or something <laughs> and just die. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> That's what we need: more suicidal cops. Glad we uh, read all those dick dictums earlier. <laughs> Uh, but 15 years later, he goes, uh, when, when he's visiting um, Kotone's grave, uh, he meets uh, for the first time uh, Suzune, who is all grown up and looks very much like her mother. Um, I think it's the same actress, like, uh, as in yeah. the photo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she, he, he talks to her and she, she tells her that uh, she looks like her mother did when she was young. And she tells him that, like, she's also going to die young like her mother does because uh, she's very sick with a heart disease and Athena decides that he's going to do anything to save her um, because he couldn't save her mother uh, and then we skip forward to uh, this, this morning at 10am uh, when he was standing um, at the scramble um, because he was in charge um, with protecting Hitomi and he gets a phone call from um, uh, Daisuke uh, for the first time in years. And Daska screams at him that um, Suzune is in critical condition and that he knows that he's uh, facing Hitomi right now and that he just had to shoot her in the head. And um, Tatiana doesn't quite uh, get it. Uh, and Daska tells him that she has like Bombay blood and that it will save uh, his daughter. He and... specifically wants her to get become brain dead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and, and Tateno points out correctly, I might add, that like, oh, there's no guarantee if I shoot her in the head that she'll just end up brain dead enough to pr- we could pull off a transplant. She might just be regular dead. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> or that um, he also talks about um, it's going to be like a policeman shooting someone, so they're not going to take her to the hospital to to like have a uh, a transplant. It's going to be an incident. Mm. Uh, the body is going to be in police custody for a while, probably. Um, 
And then, but then, but then he's like, like, come on, yeah, man. But, but yeah, but, but that can convince him that, like, they, they, they'll figure out something. And he brings <laughs> up that, like, once, once in a lifetime request from a man, which is, came up with Achi too. Yeah. <laughs> with exactly the same consequences. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Tateno um, is very easily convinced. And he <laughs> decides to kill Incredibly. Hitomi. And we get the end of the story here. So he doesn't tell um, Kano anymore. Um, and then Tateno tells uh, Kano that Kano is the worst officer he's ever seen. Because <laughs> it's too accurate. impressive. I mean, I mean, pretty accurate so far. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Kano uh, points his gun at him, and Tateno points the gun at Maria, and Tateno shouts at him to just shoot him already. And then we get a gunshot, and um, to be continued. Can I can I just point out, and I don't, I'm not trying to be like Mr. Masculine or whatever, but apparently your Kano is sobbing, which oh, is yeah. like, I know he's your hero, but come the fuck on, you well, know. Well, to be fair, he does say he was sobbing internally. Oh, I thought he was sobbing externally. I think he says literally, I was, I was, I was, I, I was sobbing internally, but I couldn't let it show. Okay, good. I mean, because really, that's. Can you imagine you're Maria and like this guy's got you at gunpoint, and the one cop who can save you is like crying. <laughs> yeah, your hostage negotiator comes up and starts crying. <laughs> that is funny, though. This is a comedy game. Yeah, I mean, okay, it is. Yeah, it's it's a funny image, but maybe if you're not being held at gunpoint, blindfolded. Speaking of, I, I just can get how like I mean, if, even given all this like very sad story. How he can just be convinced to like murder like an innocent girl? Well, uh, what's yeah? And and I mean, I guess m- maybe in the moment, like with Daisuke yelling at him, okay. But then when Hitomi gets away, he like very calmly keeps pursuing her all day, <laughs> 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 trying to kill well, her. And also, Tateno's got he's got like reasonable, logical proof of why he shouldn't do it. And Daisuke's response is just like, "Nah, man, just do it." It'll work. Yeah. Don't worry. You know, I could maybe if there was some lead into this where if they'd had kind of a plan like before this, like somehow where he was at least like, you got it. Like if this ever happens, like you have to help me with this. And then like in that moment, it's like it's Satomi, the girl in front of you. And it's like he doesn't have time to think or something. But like if there was a dick dictum he- that said killing innocence is OK. <laughs> Right. Well, I think the last dictum didn't make the book, and it was just like, hey, either I save this girl, I kill myself. Who gives a fuck anymore? I'm a bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh not as bad God. as Kano, but still. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still not sure how um, Daisuke is, is connected to the terrorist plan. He's obviously involved. But why did they need him? Yeah. At the all? surveillance. Or is somehow, like, this whole plan, like, this is how he can get Hitomi brain dead or at least involved in all this because it's Maria gets infected with Ua, but yeah. Hitomi has the real thing, you know? I think that the, the original plan was that the um, terrorists took, they, they wanted Hitomi, so they, they were supposed to take Hitomi to, to him and they uh, would extract the um, antidote out of her and then leave it mm-hmm. for him for, the, uh, for her blood. Yeah. It must have been an exchange for letting them use his surveillance system. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of questions. Like, how do they even know he has that? How does he get in touch with terrorists? How is he like cool with all you know that type of yeah. stuff? But, yeah. But you know, whatever. It's it works sort of or whatever. So um, <sighs> now, what were we? Let's talk about no, Maria. Yeah. Close yeah. Maria. What all do right. you do with a problem like Maria? <laughs> Uh, nice. So I have in my notes because I started with her cane guy, which we know is Tateno. Uh, is marching Maria to the explosion at gunpoint, like towards where the explosion happened, you know. And she asks who she is, but the man says, once you see Hitomi Osawa, you'll know. And he warns her that there's painful memories she'll remember too, though, if she gets her memory back. Like, just so you know, there's downsides to this. Yeah, and like, he also you know, says to her, do you really, do you prize your memories that much? And she's like, well, I don't have them. So yeah, I guess. Oh, <laughs> like, sorry, you had a shitty life, dude. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's, like, I guess he's like everybody's like me, where they'll just murder an innocent at the drop of the hat. I wish I could forget why I want to kill myself for somebody else. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like all these people in his life to do the whole like you have to do one thing for me in your whole life and they're all awful things he's like damn it not again but all right um so anyway they stop at this office building and go to the roof right and they wait for a while but um but maria gets kind of bored just standing there so she said offers him this the notebook she found you know with the photo and he's like, where'd you get this? And he's like, this photo, this is me and my childhood friends. There is one boy who was good with machines and got bullied a lot. And I would like kind of help protect him and stuff. And the other was a girl. And she was like a big sister to both of us, you know. Um, so you can ask their names. If You can ask if they were a love triangle or just listen. It doesn't matter. I listened, though. Um, well, they both boys had the crush on this girl. But and but um, Tateno and the, the girl started dating in high school. But they break up and then you get a keep out. So that gets undone later because, of course, you have to know to, um, to, uh, uh, Tateno. Well, anyway, so uh, Tateno blindfolds her with like, I think he puts a hood over her, right? Um, yeah. Oh, no. He actually does a real blindfold. Yeah, full blindfold. Oh, it's real blindfold. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so he's saying, like, oh, uh, so he says over wireless that he secured Maria Osawa. And then all of a sudden she knows her name. Um, now you have Tateno. Let's get, you've confirmed Tateno. Uh, she also overhears Tateno says that he'll kill her if he doesn't get Hitomi. Um, so he's talking to Kano at this point, though Maria doesn't know that. And then Maria says, like, are you serious about that? And he says, just bear with me a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, okay. Thanks. Oh, sorry, I, I, I know, then he blindfolds her. Sorry. That's a good um, line. While she's blindfolded, she gets... A memory again of showing Kanan or Kanan the cat's cradle, and in return, Kanan teaches her self defense. Um, Fair trade. So they train. They make a note that this happened after the kidnapping attempt where she met Kanan, obviously, you know? Um, but this is like apparently how she knows how to fight, like even in the Tama costume and then later and stuff. This is also like, again, another. I mean, the, the first time we kind of. In previous chapters too, it's been leading up to it, but I think also the the Kanan Maria connection is that they like each other more than just friends. I mean, what, would you really come <laughs> halfway across the world to save someone who wasn't your girlfriend? I don't know. Are there any platonic friends in Four Twenty Eight Shibuya Scramble in your mind? I'm just curious. I mean, they all are. They all are actually know, in I the know, terms of the joking. intention of the the writer. But I want to. I want to inject some romance into this because it's very, it's it's rife for it. It's, it's ripe for romance, you know? The tension is high. Yeah. Emotions are everywhere. Everywhere, all over the place, every chapter. There's plenty of opportunity. So and I are platonic relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so and his wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. Yeah. But also, like, this game... Whenever this game attempts real relationships, they're bad at it, so you have to put your own in there. Yeah. I think, I think honestly, the platonic implies friendship, which I don't think applies oh, to yeah. Asala and I. No, it anyway. doesn't. Um, all right, so then they, she has another memory, like another flashback um, of, a, a, of a, like trying to find her tell, but getting lost, and then getting accosted and being saved by Kanan again. But anyway, K- K- uh, Kano arrives, but he didn't bring Hitomi. The Tana removes her blindfold, and the first thing she sees is a big blimp, and she's sure she's seen it before recently, and it makes her memories come flooding back. She remembers getting kidnapped from the party and her necklace dropping. Like, you get images of those, like, happening really fast. Um, her plan was to go an hour earlier, let herself get kidnapped, and use the necklace as, like, a GPS tracker so Kanan could track her. Of course, that didn't work out because the necklace broke. Um, let's see here. Uh, and the terrorists yeah. keep hitting her in the head for no yes. reason. Yeah, they do. I don't really understand that or whatever. Um, but while she's in the kidnapper's car, she sees a blimp, which is why her memories get triggered this time. Um, but a man on the cell phone in the car says everything went fine and she's going to be held up in the storeroom. So the man puts her in the storeroom, which we now know is into electronics and, and yep, hits her on the head again. And this is the one that causes amnesia because they keep <laughs> bonking her on the head. Um, so... She has a memory of Kanan who says, you know, he says, like, look, you've been li- living peacefully in Japan, you know, like your life's so easy. Like, do you know, what would you live for? What is justice? And all these other questions. Because um, basically, like, she's like, do you have any friends? Like, or anything? He's like, you don't know anything about me. You have this peaceful, easy life, you know, 
But then while they're while like can't Kanan's like kind of mad at her or whatever, Maria's doing Cat's Cradle and Kanan's like, what's that? <laughs> she's like, oh, it's Cat's Cradle. Let me show you. And Kanan can't get it. It takes her a few tries. Um, what do you call it? And basically Maria says that her her mother, her real mother, who got sick and died when she's young, uh, taught her Cat's Cradle. And Kanan says her parents died during the war. She says, but I do have this one friend who was killed um, by Alfard, it turns out. And her sole purpose is to avenge him. Not not the parents, but their friend. Okay. And that's another so she game. She explains Alfard. I'm sorry? That's another game, right? That's the other yes. game? And Oh, I speaking of so. other games, the the, the Minori Kawa talks about yeah. the other case. That's another another thing, right? The suicide case? I It, it might be. I mean, the other game is, is a school, takes place in a school, and he's a reporter there, so it, it might be. I didn't play it, so I don't know note, for sure. The, the note, yeah, the note said something like, um, but that's another story for another time talking about it. But anyway. It certainly implies that that sounds like it's coming from yeah. another game, which might you know, involve Norikawa. So Kanan uh, explains that Alfard is a destructionist, not a terrorist. He's just an evil guy who does terrorism for fun. He's the Joker. He has no political. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Like to watch where it will burn. Yeah, no political ideology, just an asshole. So who, who do you think it is? Because it has to be someone we've met, right? With all this, like, build-up. Yeah. It, I would say, yeah. But uh, but I, I don't know who it can be. Except for Tanaka, maybe. Tanaka seems like the leading suspect. Alcar 1 may be faking that he's just paid. Mm-hmm. Um... I don't know. Uh, who's the guy? Who's who's Achi's father again? Daisuke. Daisuke. It, uh, they also say that they don't know if it's if it's a man or a woman. It might be I. Oh yeah. That'd be but bananas. What sort of what sort of person do we know that has a complete disregard for humanity? <laughs> hmm. But like, it has to be someone too who's not living in Japan, right? Like, because isn't Alfred like an international terrorist? Well, it's someone who has definitely been overseas, so they have to have the freedom to be able to move. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Maybe it is someone we've never heard of before. I don't know. Wait, are you implying that Alfred is actually their real name? <laughs> that would be great. I, well, how the hell would I know? I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's, it. I don't know. It'd be weird if, like, Alfred's like, I'm going to pretend to settle down with this really boring virologist for, like, a few years and then, like, continue my terrorist plot like i, I mean maybe if, if you're very jokerish it's possible that would that would be kind of anticlimactic for the joker to just be like all right i'm gonna have i'm gonna get married now i could see it though right she just like, became just pre- a terrorist because she was in a loveless boring marriage and she had nothing better to do with her time so she channeled all of her frustration into becoming an international terrorist uh, yeah like, I forget, this is how a guy sucks. I'm going back to terrorism. Every housewife needs a hobby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, the biggest trick the Joker ever played was convincing the world he was just a Japanese <laughs> housewife. Oh my god, end the episode. <laughs> All right, look, I only got one paragraph left here. My wife's texting me, so here's the deal, okay? <laughs> um... Maria says her stepmother sucks and she can't do Cat's Cradle. So, yeah, I is probably Alfard based on that. Um, and she's more interested in herself than her kids. She gives weird advice, like Maria should just get married and live for a man. And then Kanan wants to learn Cat's Cradle. So Maria asks her about her friend and Kanan says she wasn't. She doesn't want to. T- I, I don't want to tell you about my friend. You would want to be around a terrorist. And Maria's like, <gasps> and then Kanan's like, just kidding. And then she learns Cat's Cradle. Anyway, we're back to the present. <laughs> Um, Maria gets her memories and realizes she has to go. And then we get a short video of her face. And then, interestingly, we get end of her story. Yeah. Like, and that's yeah. it for Maria. Yep. And now, the, in the, there's like, her column is now kind of like blocked, meaning normally, like, you can loop around with the little time chart, you know? Like, if you go off the, like, to the rightmost character, it'll bring you back to the leftmost. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. But now you cannot do anything there. Oh. It's almost like there's a character missing from that slot. She's hmm. a will. Nah, yes. Yeah, so she's probably either going to be with Kano or not doing anything to continue the plot, I guess. So so her story's over. Yeah, I'm figuring she's like an NPC now. Yeah, I, th- I think yeah. we're going to get... Someone else is going to get introduced. Yeah. I actually know who because I was looking up the good ending to this. He's got spoiled on wow. some of the stuff. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Okay, but we will save that for next time. The final chapter, maybe? 
now we have two more. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Who is Alfard? Find out next time. Or possibly the time after that. Probably the time after that. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.